How's it going everyone? Data here and welcome back to the Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode episode number 13 moving into year number four the 2023-24 regular season with NHL 22 coming sooner than we think. I'm trying to get as many episodes in the Blue Jackets series done ASAP which means I'm going to try to squeeze in the entire year number four in this episode. We do have a lot to cover. We do have a lot of ideas that we want to think about moving into this fourth season and I'm going to do my best to squeeze it in. If not, it'll just be a half season, but you already know that by the title of this video, and I will do my best. In the last one, we had an off season that saw some good growth, most especially from Felipe Sanderson, up to an 86 overall, the fourth overall pick in 2022. He is already into a second line role. Zach Hyman at an 85. We saw, find him on the third line. We picked up Cedric Paquette for our fourth grinder line, which is at a plus three right now. And the defense, we went out and got Brian Dumoulin, who is an 82 overall. We signed him in free agency three years at 2.95. Uh, goaltending stays the same with Shesterkin and Corpy Salo. But we do have a lot of issues when it comes to the lineup because there are very good players who should be making this team, but there's just not quite enough room. So with all that in consideration, we thought about some possible trades. We were looking at some possible trade options, most notably a player who is a restricted free agent, Zach Jones of the New York Rangers, medium top four offensive defenseman, 22 years of age with medium top four deep potential, 84 overall. He has 86 offensive awareness, hasn't really done anything at the NHL level yet. His first full season was nine points in 80 games. And last year, he was almost a healthy scratch the entire season as he played only eight games. So he definitely wants out from the Rangers. They have him on, on uh, their trade block. He doesn't have very much value, but it would create more issues at defense for us. So if we were to acquire him, where kind of would the spot that he fits come from and who would be going out the other way. One of my main concerns in the last episode came from the grinder line because yes, we get a plus three on that fourth line, but they're with 77 and 78 overall players. Meanwhile, we could call up 80 overall Philip Schlappick, 79 overall Zach Seneshin, 79 overall Kevin Stenland, and so forth to be on that fourth line instead. Higher overalls, but not the same plus on the chemistry. Now, what I didn't really consider, and what Pat brings up in his very nice essay comment here, part of it, is that even though, you know, if a 77 makes you squirrely, just upgrade uh, Nick Delorier, for example. But the grinder line was nothing but a positive last season. Don't let some replacement value playmaker force your hand. Is Schlappick playing eight minutes a night worth tanking the entire penalty kill? I hadn't taken the penalty kill into consideration. Is it worth paying more for fourth line scrubs in the future? considering that grinders are comparatively cheap. Maybe even 30-plus goal scorer Michael Oliver making $3 million could be an option for us, if not now, then sometime in the near future. I hadn't taken the penalty kill into consideration. I touched up the special teams. The penalty kill gets a 0 and a plus 1, and the 3-man PK goes 0-0, zero, zero, as opposed to negative 3, negative 3 like usual, by using the grinders. So it looks like it would probably make sense to keep the grinders maybe not the most ideal fourth line, but still a very serviceable one, and we get the boost on penalty kill. So Delorier, Paquette, and Shaw will be playing like 80, 81, and 81. Nick Delorier last season played in 74 games and had 12 points with a plus 5. Andrew Shaw was a man possessed in the playoffs especially. 26 points in all 82 games. In the playoffs, he scored... Three goals in 15 games. Sorry, I'm thinking about the preseason last year when he had seven points and six goals in seven games. Yeah, that's when he went off. Cedric Paquette, a new addition for us coming through free agency. Going back to Pat's comment, he says, within the top nine, can we get a chemistry check on line one and two for Hyman? He actually doesn't change anything. If you swap him with Bjorkstrand, it keeps the plus three. And if you swap him with Olofsson, it keeps the plus one. He only wants about four million right now. So that low extension amount is a window of opportunity to have four more seasons of a plus three or five if he works. Doesn't quite, but maybe some people could be placed around him to make it work. So extending Hyman would be the move. Then we can plan to move on from Boone Jenner and his nearly double asking price. Maybe Victor Olof Olofsson is the odd man out to make room. On defense, as of now, we have eight D-men. So let's swap over here. Four defensive defensemen, three offensive defensemen, and the two-way D in Seth Jones. 
check the PK fits for Larson, Dumlin, and Wood. They're all almost identical, by the way. Move on from the worst fit. If all is equal, which it pretty much is, trade Larson since we likely won't be keeping him. He wants five, six million to resign. And an 83 is usually a significant jump in trade value from an 82 or an 81. Jeremy Roy might be an 81 top four, but he is 26 years of age. The growth window is shut beyond statistical growth. He or Dahan should be the seventh defenseman. So a lot of this hinges on whether or not we go out and get Zach Jones. A possibility that I was considering is that Justin Fall goes to the first pair. We go plus five. Jones can play on the second pair with Zach Jones. And then the third pair can be either Larson and Dumoulin, or if we end up moving on from uh, Adam Larson, it could be Dumoulin and Dehan, and that would make um, either we trade Larson, or he becomes a seventh D-man, or it would probably make more sense to trade him, and then Kyle Wood becomes our seventh D-man if Dehan moves into the lineup. I'm pretty content with that, and Jeremy Wa would have to be moved as well. I'm quite content with that, because it gets a full-time plus five on that first unit as well, and it's pretty, pretty tempting to get that chemistry, especially with another offensive defenseman in the system. I like the story of picking up Zach Jones. I think it makes a lot of sense for us. There was a lot of support for it in the comments as well. Signing him would be a possibility, but like Isaiah says, if we go after Jones, make sure the Rangers have no cap space to do it or give them a deal that they could match, but it would mess them up. So I wouldn't want them. I've had, it's happened before where we go to sign a player to an offer sheet. It looks like the team has no room, but then they somehow pull some strings and they have the room. So the Rangers want to move on from Jones. He wants to move on from them. He was a healthy scratch. He didn't get the chance that he should be given. His trade value is extremely low. We could turn this guy into a real tank. And the support is there for it. Apo saying that he's jumping on the sign Jones trade. JVR Don says definitely consider just trading for him. And Patrick says that Jones offer sheet wouldn't be cheese. Get him where they can't match. Let him run the second, third D pair. And probably, and we probably have the best six D men in the league. Worst case, we can still upgrade from Dumoulin or Larson mid-year. And in the Discord server, Zach's saying that he is a fan of Zach Jones because it's another form of Zach and another Jones. Making note of Seth Jones, of course, so 100% do it. Scout everyone on Carolina's block. We'll never know when we want one to improve line chemistry or overall because they have pretty much their whole team on the block. Also put Tori Krug on the list of potential offensive defensemen to replace Seth Jones if we want even more chemistry. If we make the trade, think about trading Jacob Pelletier as he's too good for the AHL but not quite good enough for the NHL. So capitalize on the value now. Also scout Nazem Kadri. He's on the radar. Physical guy with grit and heart. And in game, he probably won't get suspended five games in round number one. So thank you for all those comments. Wanting to get through those ASAP because we have a long episode ahead potentially. Zach Jones is someone that I really want to acquire from the Rangers. We could sign him for one, two years. I don't know, two million. But maybe the Rangers make moves to, to, to sign him on. They really don't need him. So the computer would be matching him for no reason. Uh, we also wouldn't have to, in real life, you don't have to rub, you don't have to ruffle the feathers of the New York Rangers. We just trade for them, for them, give them some value, and we just go our separate ways. What I was thinking of trading them back the other way to make it pretty real, more realistic, would be to give them Sergei Dargachinsev. Now, Dargachinsev, we could trade someone else, whatever, we dump Hagelin and, and uh, Corbin, we give them a couple prospects and a third. Maybe that would happen, but to keep it realistic. Darga Chinsev is medium top six, 77 overall, top six potential, and another playmaker. We have a lot of playmakers in the system. We do have to be honest here. He has done well in the AHL. He had 43 points in 69 games last season. He will definitely be an NHLer, I believe, but at 22 years of age, it's I don't know if it's going to happen. Plus, if it does, we just have a lot of prospects and a lot of playmaking prospects. I, I'd, I'd rather give more time to Jacob Pelletier and other people that we'll have in our system rather than Darga Chinsev, especially with Felipe Sanderson already pushing his way into the top six. We don't quite have the room, I have to admit. So I wouldn't mind just giving them Darga Chinsev. You give me back Jones. I take back maybe even a pick with it, and we go our separate ways. Everybody's happy. So I'm not sure what I could squeeze out of the Rangers, but let me try this out. Darga Chinsev, too far off for a third round pick, but I don't think it's quite far off if I just try a fourth round pick. Uh, isn't sufficient at all, but then watch me put a fifth round pick and they'll say, oh, I won't look a gift horse in the mouth. A uh, bit low for us, fair enough. Let's just make it a sixth and a seventh and call it a day. Sixth this year, seventh next year, bit low for us, just the sixth, and there it is. On behalf of the New York Rangers organization, I accept your trade offer. 
We'll see you out on the ice. So, Mr. Dragic Tinsev, I wish you the best in your career. The Rangers had a abund an abundance of defense. We went ahead and make made the deal happen. Um, I will edit the lines in the AHL, and then what we need to do is sign a couple of AHL defensemen. So I sent out a couple of um, of contracts already, and those, once those guys sign on, everything will be fixed. But the big thing now is getting Zach Jones signed and then moving around the defense to make room for him. So I'm really hoping on him wanting a cheap deal even still. He was wanting like, yeah, the one year 2.5 range. But two years, 0 0.775. We can go up to three years at 1.750. What does he want for eight years? Only 4.55 for eight years. What if we go s even six, seven years? Whoa, this is a, quite the opportunity for us here, actually. 85% is 3.46. So could we go seven years at 3.5? 3.475. Seven years at 3.475 for Zach Jones. It brings him to the age of 29. Or do we push it to eight years and pay him 3.875 extra? You know what? Let's do it. 3.875 for eight years on Zach Jones. This is crazy. If he signs this, then pfft, I think it will, we will quickly, very quickly get our money's worth. So I'm going to go ahead and send him that offer. Uh, I hope he signs it. Speaking of expiring deals, we do want to send offers to... Patrick Liney probably wants a bit too much right now. Yeah, but I wouldn't mind getting Zach Hyman signed up. Uh, we have 27 million extension dollars. So we could get him signed for maybe like three years while he's currently at medium top six potential. It takes him to the age of 34. That brings it down to 3.15. So three years at 3.150 for 85 overall power forward for our third line. Yeah, yes, please. I will take that. So we'll see what Hyman and Jones both say. Jenner currently wanting 3.5. Actually, well, he wants five if it's more than that. And Adam Larson, of course, he wants in the 5.9 million range, about 6 million. So he's going to be moving uh, on after this season for sure. Wa still wants a cheap deal, but just really not much room for him at all. So with those extensions sent, now we can advance a couple of days and see who wants to sign on. Scouts have been sent out. Wonderful. Uh, so we're waiting on a coach as well, a new NHL assistant coach, I believe. So Martin Ferharvery, left defenseman for the AHL. He's on board. Uh, no thank you from the Bruins. We'll keep going through the preseason, waiting for these guys to sign on. Gord Tuzolino, new NHL assistant coach, B- minus overall, happy to join the team. Thank you for reaching out, my pleasure. Zach Jones, I've decided to accept your offer. I look forward to making an impact on the team. That is a huge deal in terms of AAV for us, paying him under $4 million until the age of 30. Offensive defenseman, if he fits the chemistry, if he can just explode with the right partner and and just become a fixture, become a tank. That is just a, an otherworldly contract to have. Bunneman, I signed him for grinder depth as well. Uh, Rourke Chartier, AHL depth. Well, actually AHL playmaker. There was only one in the entire team. Zach Hyman, easy decision to decide to renew my contract with you. It's important for me to get what I want, blah, blah, blah. I'm so happy that I could accommodate that. Is that everybody? I think that's all the offers that I sent out in free agency as well. And okay, let's check out the lineup now. So two back-to-back preseason wins there. Let's get Zach Jones into the lineup. Let's see how he fits with chemistry as well. So Jeremy Hua is going to be the odd man out. Uh, I'm going to try going Falk and Wharf, like we said on the first pair for plus five. Uh, we'll put Dumoulin and Larson on the bottom pair just for the moment, and Hua will be swapped out with Jones. And when the Jones boys are playing together, we get a zero. Unfortunately, because Jones is a two-way D, we can't even get the plus one. Neither of them really fit this line. No. Jones doesn't fit any of the lines super, super well, but especially the second pair, he does not fit very nicely. Even if he played with Worf, it would be a plus three if he played with Worf, but a zero playing with Seth Jones. Still an 84 and an 88 on our second D pair. That is amazing. This is probably the best top six in the NHL. Just not ideal. If we did play Dumlin or Larson with Dahan uh, or Hua, but especially with Dahan, uh, yeah, he doesn't have the great fist. It would be just an, a plus one. It wouldn't be anything crazy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call up Bunneman. I'm going to send down Perrault. 
What I'm going to do is just give him first line minutes in the AHL again. He'll be guaranteed like a third liner next season. So either Boone Jenner moving out or Victor Olofsson moving out, that'll make room for Jacob Perrault and anyone else that we're putting into the lineup. Uh, Kevin Stenland, I'll also call him up to be a two-way forward, and they'll be kind of like our 13th, 14th forwards. Stenland will slot in for anyone who's not a grinder. Bunneman will slot in for any of the fourth-line guys who get injured. So let me do that. Let me touch up the special teams, and then we'll keep on finishing off the preseason. Trade away Jérémy Roy and like Berdin, other pieces we just want to dump, and then we'll get season four going. All right, showtime with these lines. 5-0-0 will be the chemistry how we start off this season. Dumoulin and Larson, hopefully they really hold it down as our two defensive defensemen. Special teams, plus one, plus one on the four-man power play units. Plus five, plus three on the regular units. Penalty kill, zero and plus one. And penalty three-man PK, zero and zero, as we already saw earlier. Extras and everything have all been touched up. AHL, plus three, plus three within the top six and some other changes that I made. Uh, that'll be touched upon a little bit more after I find a suitable trade for Jérémy Roy. At the end of last episode, I tried to trade Berdain, but nobody wanted him. Let me try and trade him now. He's a 77 overall with medium backup potential. I don't know why no one wants him. If I throw him in with Jérémy Roy, will there be anyone? No, not even. So, off to trade Roy on his own. And the offers that come our way some thirds prospects let me see what looks best some interesting names like josh hosang coming up connor sheary basically i can get it seems as though the best possible pick would be a second and a seventh either from the oilers or the jets so either way you win the western conference i'm gonna go ahead and take the deal from the oilers because i believe the jets were in the stanley cup final last year correct so probably the Oilers pick is going to be a little bit better. Jeremy Roy off to Edmonton for a second and a seventh in this year's draft. I wish you all the best in your career, and I hope that you really get a chance to crack the NHL lineup. It wasn't going to happen here. Thank you for your service in Cleveland, and we will see you around. I believe that is all taken care of in the AHL. Let's continue simulating through the NHL preseason, get a quick look at how things went through the preseason, and then we'll be ready to kick off actual simulation. Last five games go win, loss, shootout, loss, win, and loss for a record of 4-2-1 and one through the preseason. Patrick Lining, six points in seven games. Seems as though it was scoring by committee as no one really ran away with it. Six points in, six, in seven games as well for Alex Texier. Five in seven for Bjorkstrand, Hyman, Reinhardt, and Andrew Shaw, the preseason master himself. Liam Foody with four points. He's going to have to have a continuing... Uh, big, uh, continuing to have a big role in this next season. His trade value is shooting up, 23 years of age, 84 overall. He is having a big second line role this season. And I hope he's ready to step into it. Worf with four, Falk with four, Delorier three goals, Paquette three, Seth Jones three points, negative two, Boone Jenner two goals, Dumoulin two assists. Where is Zach Jones? No points and a negative three in the five games that he played. That is honestly concerning. I know that with the Rangers, he did not really do well. In 88 NHL games, he had nine points and was a negative six as an offensive defenseman. In the AHL, he showed the capability, 12 points in 24 games. Where is he from? He's American, so I guess he played in the U.S. development system. He was a third-round pick in 2019. Oh, that's true. That means he's a real player. I didn't even consider that. Zach Jones is a real player. I thought he was a generated prospect. Not here's the page right here. In the USHL, 52 points in 56 games, and then playing with the University of Massachusetts, 23 and 32, 24 and 29, and four assists in 10 games in the 2020-21 season in the real world. Interesting, so Zach Jones, real player. My bad, I should have known that. I can't believe that slipped through my memory, but uh, not a generated prospect. Maybe that'll affect how he simulates, I'm not sure. Only one goal for Felipe Sanderson, also a guy I'm looking to have a big expanded role this season. Always take the preseason with a grain of salt, but it is a little bit concerning. Shesterkin's numbers looked great. Without further ado, let's kick off season number four at home nationwide arena against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Coming off of an Eastern Conference Finals exit, we have a lot to prove this season. We're coming back with a vengeance. We are coming back stronger than ever. We want to take the Metro, take the East, and eventually take that Stanley Cup here in 2023-24. Let's hit it. First period, 2-1 Blue Jackets. Line A opens up the season 20 seconds in, and Alex Texay just a minute and a half after that. Bang! Uh, Rodion Amirov scoring for the Maple Leafs to make it a 2-1 game. We had two goals on five shots in that period. Second period, no scoring. Shots are 25-10. to 10. 
for the Leafs, but we're winning 2-1 to one right now. We need to give uh, Igor Shesterkin some support and break through Peter Mrazic a little more. Come on, and break through that defense. Power play goes nowhere to start the period. Five minutes in, so we have three shots on net. Malgin ties up this game for Toronto, 2-2. Halfway through the third, they are more than doubling our shots, 32-13 to 13 at the moment. Close to tripling, and there's Morgan Riley breaking through to make it a 3-2 game. No shots being generated, and Liljegren just adds on. Yikes. 37-17 to 17 the shots. I don't want to look at the three stars after that one. 37-17. to 17. That is ugly. Ugly. What were the plus minuses looking like after this one? The second line was a negative one. No, just Olafson was. What's up with the fourth line? Up a lie. Negative threes for the fourth line grinders. They got to wake up. Uh, I'll switch things with Bunneman or whatever, but eventually their leash is not super long. If they're going to have crazy minuses like that and be the reason why we lose, I'm going to put 80 overall scraps basically, to, without uh, a better term. Uh, Shesterkin, tough night. Yeah, all right, boys, let's just bounce back from that one. Let's get a little bit of a sample size going, and then we can start making some actual decisions. Uh, maybe just our players in our lineup don't generate enough shots, too many playmakers. That's a possibility. But let's wait until we go see a good rivalry against the Pittsburgh Penguins. We beat them in five games in round number one of the playoffs last season. That will be a good divisional matchup and a better idea of where we're sitting. one nothing shout-out victory against the Canucks, and then we get shut out 4 to nothing by the Leafs. Senators fire their coach, Kelly Osborne, right into the first week of the season. So let me just take a quick look at his chemistry fit. I'm always interested in that. Just a quick refresher that our, our head coach, Pablo Prust, uh, two Jack Adams in three years, and he has a team fit of 69%. Not ideal with guys like Texier and Jones, as we saw. Great fit for Falk, Line, even for Wharf. So the big pieces, but unfortunately not great with some other guys. Osborne, he's a veterans coach, so he won't fit. Uh, yeah, 47% team fit. What kind of season did they have? Uh, what was going on here with the Senators? They went 0-4-1 to start the season. Ooh, five games in, and he is gone. Continuing on in the simulation now. And then the Canadians fire their head coach, Rene Pouliot. There he is, who, we, who was our associate coach, and we let go because he wanted to be a head coach. We let him walk, and then he gets signed by Le Canadien Montréal, a nice French-speaking coach, obviously has to go to the Canadians. And then he gets fired, what now, like six games into the season? René Pouliot, A-plus coach, and he was 0-5-0. and 0. Yeah, Le Canadien Montréal, they're not going to stand for that. 52% team fit, so I don't think we'll be bringing him back. We'll continue to roll the dice with Pablo Prest. The team, the coaching morale is not high, actually. Tuzolino and uh, Smoskowski... Don't have good morale for us, really. 46% uh, staff chemistry, which is not really ideal for simulation. It does have an effect on simulation numbers. So 46% team staff, that could mean that we're going to have to make some changes. Uh, regardless, let's continue simulating. It was a 4-3 shootout win against the Flames. Another tight one-goal game, and there's another one. 3-2 loss. So every game has been decided by no more than two goals, except for that 4 nothing shutout loss against the Leafs. And we have not scored more than three goals in a game. We beat the Sharks 5-1, to one, just as I say that. Thank you very much. Beat the Kings 4-3, to three, a little Pacific swing. And then once again facing Calgary, we beat them 2-1. to one. Okay, 5-2-1 and one is the record. Going up against the 2-5-2 two, two Pittsburgh Penguins. Elvis is in the building in Pittsburgh. Let's go in and do what we did last season in the playoffs when we took him out. First period, no scoring. Second period, 2-1. Jonathan Taze opens it up, but then Victor Olofsson comes right back a minute 44 later. And Pat Patrick Line just about eight minutes after that. So 2-1 for the Blue Jackets heading into the third period it is a one goal lead. It's not very much. As we've been seeing, we haven't been generating enough offense, unfortunately. But if we can hang on tight, which we're not doing as Jared McCann ties this game up, then we go on the penalty kill and Kasperi Kapanen scores in the power play. From up 2-1 to down 3-2, can someone get us back in this game? Who has heart? Where are the veteran leaders out there? And they're nowhere to be found as we lose 3-2. to two. Who took that penalty? Bjorkstrand, two minutes for slashing. Fantastic. Still a small sample size, so I'd like to go and see the game after the Devils. Then we'll really pause and assess. I don't want to pause for too many slow sim games, as I want to get this simulation done, as I said, this whole season in one episode. 
Uh, Burre, broken nose. Head coach can do that in the AHL. 4-1 loss against the Penguins. So back-to-back -back L's against them. Dumoulin, broken leg. Out until February 4th. That is why we hung on to Adam Larson. That is extremely unfortunate. Yikes. Calvin DeHaan, you're going to get a full-time spot in the lineup now, but that is really brutal to lose Brian Dumoulin. Uh, Zach Jones, currently a negative four with two points in 11 games. So we're going to have to think about, ooh, yeah, we're going to have to fix some defense. Uh, I'll have to update the penalty kill, correct? No, Dumoulin was not on. No, he was, he was. So Rozenko, Falk, Jones... And then we'll put Larson, plus one, lovely. So even though he's not going to be staying here next season, at least for the moment he can fill in a very valuable, valuable role, even if we end up trading him. Unfortunately, that does mean a negative three on the second defense pair. A negative two, actually, not the worst. Negative two, we have to swallow that, sadly, because we don't have the right player types. And with that, we'll continue simulating to our exit point there at the Devils game. 4-1 loss against the Red Wings. And then a 3-0 shutout win against the Flyers. Really hot and cold team here. This is crazy. We lose 3-2, 4-1, 4-1. shut out the Flyers 3-0. At least there's that. 6-5-1 going up against the 7-3-1 three, three Devils. Please don't tell me we're going to be a 500 team after 13 games. Uh, Felipe Sanderson, one goal, eight assists to lead the team in points right now. We need more goals to be generated. That seems to be an issue for us. First period, 1-0, Oliver Bjorkstrand on the power play. Second period, 2-1, Brendan Gallagher ties it up, but then Liam Foodie, there, the, yeah, the playmaker comes out, okay. Third period, we're up 2-1, slightly outshooting the Devils, with, again, a slight lead. We need to extend it, because if not, it gets tied up quickly, and there's Kozlov doing exactly that. Halfway through the third, we are outshooting them 25-21, and Felipe Sanderson with his second goal of the season, but then Gallagher with his second of the night ties it back up again under five to go and Jakob Vran extends the lead now four to three for the Devils and that'll be all she wrote as Subban adds an empty netter Delorier comes fighting back with 37 seconds left but we drop it five four another one goal game Zach Wierenski there he is third star of the night six six and one through our first 13 games we cannot afford to stay at this level all season long we need to change things before it gets too late so let's dive into the player stats to see what's going on felipe sanderson 10 in 13 line a nine olafson eight bjorkstrand eight reinhardt only with one goal and sanderson with two goals and foodie with two goals so out of our top six forwards three of them foodie reinhardt and sanderson have combined for five goals in 13 games. That's half of our top six right there. Main goal scoring coming from Line Olafson and Bjorkstrand. That's what's hurting us right now. Texay has four goals. That's great as the playmaker as well. Falk a negative five, not looking good. Hyman five points. Jenner four. Rozenko three points, negative two. Del Whoa! Negative ten? Two goals, negative ten? Yeah, okay. I think we got to change the fourth line out here. That is definitely hurting us big, 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 big time. Whoa. Negative nine, negative nine for the grinders. Sheesh. Shesterkin, four, six, and oh. Corpusal, two, one, and one. Both are shut out a piece. Yeah, we got to fix that fourth line ASAP. Uh, if we need to overhaul the grinders, so be it. For the moment, I'll just swap one of them out with Bunneman. Hopefully, that does something. Two goals, negative 10. Two assists, negative 9. One goal, negative 9. I don't know. Let's just take Delorier out. Uh, even though he scored that late goal. I'll take him out. I'm going to put Bunneman in. Uh, Paquette has 80 face-offs. He has 77. Okay, so Bunneman keeps the plus 3 for the line. I'd like to get Texier into the top 6 somehow. That would be great. Uh, I'd, put, I'd swap him with Felipe. You know what? I will. And then Felipe Sanderson can swap with Bjorkstrand, correct. So Bjorkstrand, let's go Sanderson, Reinhardt, Line A. Sanderson can be the playmaking for Line A. Texay has been scoring some goals. So let's have him go with Olafson and Foodie. And then Bjorkstrand, who has also been scoring goals. Let's see if we can distribute the wealth a little bit and put him on the third line. Negative 2, negative 5, negative 5, negative 2, 0, and plus 2. Do we try this? Mm, I don't know. Do I even try swapping it? Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's go crazy a little bit. 
Let's go for plus three, plus three, Falk Jones, and then Jones Rajenko. The Jones boys are going to be split up. Dahan and Larson can stay as they are. Let's get another sample size for those adjust adjustments, and if they need to be changed further, then we will do so in five games time. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's go see the Canadians. We'll skip over the game against the Bruins who eliminated us, and we'll go see them next month in December on the 5th because right now we got to get the sample size going beautiful 6-0 loss to start things off 3-2 loss we get outscored uh what and then 5-2 loss sorry I gotta keep doing the math in my head and then the Bruins beat us 4-2 okay we are 6-10-1 and one, and we are someone get me a fuse because I'm lighting this dynamite Bunneman, what's up? Four games, negative three. Paquette still a negative nine, and Shaw now a negative ten. Lovely. Texier had one assist. Uh, Hyman, Jenner got one goal. Bjorkstrand has ten points and three goals. Sanderson, two goals, nine assists. Reinhardt, one goal. Line the only guy who knows how to score goals, apparently. So if I can get another goal scorer on that first line, maybe a power forward. Ideally, it would be a power forward, not Boone Jenner. I wouldn't want it because, yeah, he gives us the plus five. Ooh, but Felipe Sanderson gets... You know what? Let's go wild before I blow everything, everything up. Let's go Jenner, Reinhardt, Line. And then second line can be Texier, Foody, Olafsson, yeah. And then Hyman, Sanderson, Bjorkstrand, third line because he does have 77 face-offs. Okay, uh, fourth line. Let's start th changing things up here. Um, I'm going to actually call some guys up from the AHL, I think. I'm going to call up uh, Stenland and Schlappick. I don't know, Schlappick. 16 points for him. So I don't want to mess up the chemistry too much. That's why. Okay, I'll just call up Stenland and uh, maybe even Jack Drury. Oh, that'd be crazy. Maybe Ryan McInnes. Ryan McInnes. Give him his first. Does he have any uh, NHL action in his uh, career so far? He has played 10 games, one assist plus one. I'm um, getting a little bit desperate on that fourth line, so let's see what we can do. Delorier, Bunneman, Shaw are going to be going down. Yeah, it's going to hurt the penalty kill, but I got to experiment with something. Going to call up Stenland and um, McInnes, and let's try that out. They'll go through waivers. I'm not worried about that. None of them get claimed. Okay, here we go. 5-1-5 five, five with Paquette, McInnes, and Stenland on the fourth line. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just, I'm just grasping at straws. Uh, the defense, negative 8, negative 11. Fantastic. Great job, guys. Really, really good stuff. Rajenko with his 24 penalty minutes. Let's go him back to the first pair. Uh, Jones, negative 10. Really good stuff. Let's go Jones and then Kyle Wood on that last pair. So, 1, 5, 3 will be the plus minuses. Let's try for, sorry, for the, the line chemistry. Uh, yeah, let's do that, and I'm getting very close to making some major trades here, or at least, I don't know, something. We're 6, 10, and 1. That's disgusting. Where's the goal scoring? I might have to, like, I'm getting to a point, like, do I have to use the trade value that I have in a guy like Seth Jones to go get a big first-line power forward who can score with Patrick Laine and Sam Reinhardt? First period, 1-0 Canadians. Second period, 3-2. There's a little bit of passion. Let's go. Reinhardt, Wood, and his first game of the season. Call, just you can count on Kyle Wood at any time, any place. And then Victor Olofsson, we score three unanswered before Semenov scores on the power play. We're up by one, three to two, heading into the third period here. Got to stop the bleeding here. The, they see the GMs making the moves. Power play goes nowhere. Roster moves are happening. The management, the fans are not happy. Anyone's had to be on the chopping block. They got to show up and perform. They better have a good final five minutes here. Power play for the Canadians. We kill it off. There we go. Final minute of play, and we take it 3-2. And a bit of a nail-biter, but a dub nonetheless. Olofsson first star. Shesterkin makes 24 saves. And Kyle, legend himself, would. 7, 10, and 1 is now the record. I don't like that we're not scoring enough goals, though. That is the issue at the moment. Let's keep getting a few more games of simulation in. But at any moment, we might have to pause and look to make a big-ish kind of trade. Because we can only do so much for the fourth line. We need the big boys to be accountable as well. 4-2 win, tough 1-0 loss, and then a 2-1 loss. Whether it's 20-0 or 1-0, it's still an L. And it can't be that we're not able to score goals. It really can't be. Uh, I'll keep going against the Hurricanes. Uh, so one, two, three, four. If we lose three out of five of these, I'll, we'll probably have to make some moves. Schlappick, head coach, replaces. Dallas, Nashville, Carolina, Nashville again, then Pittsburgh. 7-3 loss, followed by a 3-1 loss. One more L, and we're pausing. 
Carolina Hurricanes. Let's go. 3 0 shutout victory somehow out of nowhere. Moving into the month of December now. Tatar for. No, I'm not going to move those prospects for Tatar. I need a power forward if anybody. 6 4 loss. Stop the presses. We're 9 15 and 1. I, this is like fire. This is fireable. This is a fireable offense from the coaching staff at 46, 40% 40 staff chemistry. 40% staff chemistry. Okay. Tuzolino, you're gone. Smuskowski, you're gone. Staff chemistry goes to 38%. Great. Prust, your job is on the line. What is going on right now? What is going on? Offense, defense is at a C minus. Power plays at an A plus. You're lucky there's no one who's. I don't know, maybe there is someone that I could kind of rationalize to have in here. Let's look through the head coaches again. This is going to be a long video, man. 46, 46, 64, 71. Frederick Haynes, our old uh, assistant coach. He could be our head coach. Even Neil Swift, great fit with Worf. Loves Jenner, loves Larson. Style defensive. Or we go balance with Frederick Haynes, who loves Sanderson, loves Hyman, loves Jenner. But Sanderson, I don't really want him being on the third line forever. So I don't know if I like that it's a 71, even though it's a 71% team fit. I'd probably go with Neil Swift here, defensive, because he has A- minus offense and defense. You know what? What the heck? Let's do it. I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to take the plunge. I'm ready to go five years, 1.5 million on Neil Swift to be the new head coach. If he takes it, then great. And then NHL assistant coach, anyone else, I'll find someone else to hire, and I'll transition Prust into interim head coach and we'll go from there. Vincent Lachance seems to be the best in terms of he has really good coach influence and he's good on the special teams. I'm not sure again how much that even really means for anything when you have an assistant coach but let's give him 600k for three years. Vincent Lachance, bienvenue à l'équipe j'espère. Uh, and Pedro Prust, I'm going to be, uh, sorry, Daniel is going to go to NHL goalie coach. Prust is going to associate coach and then to interim head coach. Uh, no, then Daniel would be associate coach. There we go. And the assistant coach will be filled, hopefully, by the guy that gets hired, and then we'll move them around accordingly. So there you go. That's Those are the changes that we've got to make, I suppose. And I'm also going to be looking for um, the player search. Let's go look for a power forward. There really aren't many available. i got to find someone who is like a first line kind of power forward. I'm not looking for an 84, 85 overall power forward. I'm looking for a big boy. I'm looking 86 plus. Kubalik, Tuck, Kachuk, Roy, Landeskog, Stone, Dubois, and Kachuk are pretty much the guys that I am interested in. Do I try and reacquire uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois? Last year of his deal, no extension in place. And he plays center and moves Sam Reinhardt to the wing? I don't think so. I'd prefer to get a winger, left winger that is. Uh, Nicolas Roy, not great simulation numbers at the moment. Matthew Kachuk. Uh, doesn't fit any of the lines. Alex Tuck doesn't fit any of the lines either. Dominic Kubalik fits the second line. <sighs> Great shooting. Five-star shooting for a power. Yeah, he scores. He scores goals. I'd love to get Kubalik, even if he doesn't have a good fit. Just to get a plus three, maybe. Kubalik from the Hawks. They're 17-8-2, but he's on an expiring deal, so maybe that's why they would want to trade him. Now the question is, what do I send back their way? Do we look at doing the Adam Boquist blockbuster? Is that what we're thinking of here? Adam Boquist, four goals, seven assists, negative eight. Do we want him on this team? I don't know. 11, and plus, sorry, I'm looking at these line fits, but I'm saying we're getting a new head coach, so I shouldn't be thinking about the line fits at all, actually. I don't know. If he went and got Adam Boquist, two years left on his deal. Seth Jones, what's he doing over here? Negative 10 with five points. That two-way D's been killing us the whole time. Okay, let's say we do trade Seth Jones. Who else do we toss in here? Who are we not bringing back? Like maybe Victor Olafson, maybe Calvin DeHaan, but now we need him in the lineup kind of with, um, with what's his name out, with uh, Dumoulin out of the lineup. Could I give you Calvin DeHaan as well as Boone Jenner? And then, because he's not gonna be on the plus five anymore in that first line. And then you give me back a defenseman? A one year left Alex, Alec Martinez perhaps? Uh, fits D pairing three, maybe. Four board fits all defensive pairings, and he's a defensive defenseman. Fills in kind of for uh, Dumoulin. So I could take back four board. That kind of evens things out. So Jones, Dahan, and Jenner for Kubelik, Boquist, and four board. I don't think we're even close at the moment, too far off. But I'd be willing to sweeten the pot to make this happen. Even should we throw in Adam Larson? But he's been steady. 25 games plus four. Yeah, he's been the only guy who's been steady pretty much. 
So capitalizing on Dahan's value at the moment might be the right move. What if we throw in the second round pick from Edmonton, basically adding Jeremy Roy to the deal? What do you say to this, Chicago? Jones, Dahan, Jenner, Berdain, and a second for Kubelik, Boquist, and Forbort isn't sufficient at all. So I'll have to take out Berdain. He's not going to be leaving today, unfortunately. If I throw in a third, are we any closer at this point? Oh my goodness. Call it a blockbuster. The Blackhawks and the Blue Jackets. Oh my goodness. Seth Jones, just like people have been calling for, for it to happen since episode one. Move Jones for Boquist. Make it happen. We pick up Dominic Kubalik. Wow, what a splash. Big move. New coach coming in. We're going to turn this season around. Oh my goodness. Say it with me, everybody. Plus five with Rajenko. Playing like a 95 and a 92. Let's go. Let's go. Plus five, five, three for the chemistry. Adam Boquist, welcome to the Columbus Blue Jackets, the place where you are in the real world. We'll wait till a new coach comes in to really fix our lines more. But wow, 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 wow. What a deal that is. Should we think about extending Kubelik ASAP? I would probably want to do that. A scoring power forward is so, so hard to have in franchise mode unless you draft him. So he's currently making 3.76. He wants, yeah, he's definitely going to want money. We do have the extension dollars, 22 million to make it happen. The question is, do we do it sooner or later? Wait and see what he does or just sign him up now. The risk is his asking price going up. Or we sign him today for five years at 7.150 uh, about, 7.125 even. So we can do five years at 7.125. First line power for it. It's not a bad deal, actually. If he takes it, I'm happy to do it. Five years at 7.125 for Dominic Kubalik. Welcome to the Columbus Blue Jackets. <sighs> wow. Wow. Let's advance a few days here up against the Penguins. Let's see if they beat us or what. Kublik now the leading goal scorer on the team. You lose 3-2 in the shootout, of course. Come on, Mr. New Head Coach. Get in here. Schlappik is healthy. Or do I just fire press straight up? I don't know. Against the Boston Bruins. I'm going to reject your offer. Pfft. I'll just have to offer him more money. And Vincent Lachance. Welcome to the team. At least there's him. Uh, Boston Bruins. And Kubelik, easy decision to decide to renew my contract with you. Okay. Dominic Kubelik. What a splash. And then we lose 4-2. to two. Okay, can we get this new coach in here, please? This guy, I don't like the makeup of your team. Would you like uh, $1.8 million for the next five years of your life? Uh, I don't know if I like the makeup of your team. Okay, here you go. Let's make it $2 million for five years. There you go, Mr. Neil Swift. A B-rated coach making $10 million over a five-year contract. Come on now. Shootout loss and a loss since we made those changes. Then there's a 5-3 win. There we go. Let's go, Neil. There you go. Oh, I'm happy to join the team. I'm sure you are. Okay, let's see the staff now. It was at 40, whatever, 38%. Hey, there we go. 76%. There we go. Pablo Press from head coach to goalie coach. Uh, La Chance is super happy, so I'll keep him assistant coach. Bang. 76% staff chemistry. Let's fix these lines up with how this new head coach likes the chemistry, and we go from there. All right, so the chemistry is not ideal with this new head coach, I do have to say. We do get a plus three on the first line, but we're going to try to just go by staff chemistry being higher and more, I don't know, shots being generated by Kubelik, etc. Third line being all 84-85s. Hopefully that carries us through, even though the fits are not perfect. Do we need to think about trading Victor Olofsson now? Maybe. I don't know. It depends if we stick to this coach. Prust is still in the system. We could bring him back if need be. I brought the grinders back to give them another chance with this new coach now. Plus, they do help the uh, penalty kill. Plus one and zero, even though it's pretty brutal because no one seems to fit. Power play, we still keep plus five, plus three. And on defense, that's the most important part. We got plus five, plus five, plus three. So 95, 92, 90, 87, third pair, 87, 84. Oh. Okay, let's see if that does anything at all or if we're still in the absolute pits of the inferno as we cannot seem to get a single thing going with any of our players. Staff chemistry is high, morale is a bit higher. I've totally glossed over the fact that we just traded away 
our franchise leading uh, player with being Boone Jenner, the most uh, seasons and games played in franchise history. We had to trade him away. We knew he wasn't coming back next season because of his asking price. He ended up playing 760 games with the franchise, tied the season record with 11 with Cam Atkinson. So, you know, hats off to him. What a career he's had with the Blue Jackets. I wish him the best, whether it be with the, ja- the Blackhawks or anybody else. Seth Jones as well. We traded Ryan Johansson for him back in the day in so many trade talks. Was he going to stay? He, we were brought into this team to make him stay, basically. And in year number four, we end up trading him away. There goes our captain. There goes our alternate. So Sam Reinhardt, probably the number one candidate for captain right now. For the moment, we'll go with three alternates. I'll throw an A on Patrick Laine's jersey. He definitely deserves one, as well as I'm tempted to give... No, I'm going to give it to someone on defense, and that would be... Let's give it to Adam Larson. Good veteran uh, presence, defensive defenseman back there for us. Even if he doesn't stay beyond this season, just for right now, give him that A to say thank you for all the hard work that you've been giving us. So there are there is the leadership core moving forward. Let's see what we do at the XL Energy Center for our first slow sim game with everything in order against the Wild. First period, down one nothing, Kevin Fiala. Second period, no scoring. Shot 17 to 16 for Minnesota. Nothing coming yet. We need to get something generated here in the third period. And it is Sam Reinhardt on Cal Peterson, who just signed a huge deal in the real world today. Zach Parise comes right back, though. 2-1 for the Wild. Power play Minnesota. We kill it off. And Sam Reinhardt with his second of the night. He is really fighting for that captaincy. But then Joel Eriksson makes it 3-2. to two. Why can't we get anything? It's thank you, Cedric Bucket. Merci, Cedric. 4-3, Liam Foody. And the Jackets take it 4-3 out of nowhere with 42 seconds left. Two goals in the final three and a half minutes. Cedric Paquette and Liam Foody. The Jackets win it 4-3. That is what we've been missing on this team. Passion, fight, will, never say die attitude. That has been the biggest thing that we've been missing. New voice behind the, the, the bench. We got new players in the system. New letters on jerseys. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Let's move a good little sample size once again of simulation since this episode is going to be way too long. Let's go. String together some W's. 2-1 shootout win against the Panthers. A dub's a dub. Anaheim Ducks beat us 4-2. Sharks fire their head coach. Uh, I'll take a look at him after we're done the simulation here. Edmonton Oilers, 19-13-2. We shut them out 1-0. Devils beat us 4-1. Winnipeg Jets beat us 4-1. New York Islanders, right before the Christmas break now, we beat them 3-1. We're 14-19-2. Christmas Eve game against the Senators. We shut them out 3-0. Merry Christmas. Uh, in Colorado against the Avalanche on Boxing Day, we lose three to one. One step forward, two steps back. Six three win against the Jets. Thank you, uh, Capitals. Didn't see what happened against them. We won six to three, and then we beat the Stars four to one. Okay, so that is a one, two, three, four, five. We won five of our last six now. Eighteen twenty and zero is our record. Slightly ish looking up. Uh, kind of at moments I suppose let's take a look here Dominic Kubalik 44 points what has he done with us so far eight points and a plus six in 15 games not bad at all playing like an 89 line a 32 points in 40 games with 14 goals Felipe Sanderson 29 in 40 Bjorkstrand 27 Reinhardt 24 Olafson 22 Justin Falk a negative 14 I wish I could see what he's done just in the last little bit but that's pretty shameful stuff Adam Boquist is a negative 2 with 7 points in 15 games, despite playing like a 92 overall. Foodie, 17. Hyman, 17. Texay, 12. Rajenko, negative 12. With that kind of defense, 94 shot blocking, 90 stick checking, uh, I do not understand why. He has perfect fits on pairs 1 and 2, but at this point, I'm tempted to even trade him away. I'm not going to right now, but I'm tempted to with a negative 12. Wood has seven goals and eight points in 23 games. There's that passion. Cedric Pocket, negative 13. Jones, six points and a negative six. Larson, four points plus two. Shaw's a negative 15. Ah, oh, that fourth line, man. Bunneman, negative six in 16 games. The, that fourth line's killing me. Goalies, Shosturkin, 14, 18, and one with four shutouts. Corpy is looking great with his numbers. Both of them are not doing bad, though. Man, uh, we got to look at upgrading those grinders. Maybe the suggestion that I've seen a few times in the comments of going out and getting Tom Wilson and or Michael Oliver is a possibility for us. 
but we need to overhaul that fourth line, I think. We're starting to show a little bit of fight, and I don't want to let that flame die out. So looking at all the grinders in the NHL and sorting by overall, sorting by overall, we have Michael Oliver, 85 overall, very low trade value, 16 goals, but 30 penalty minutes. With his 99 discipline, fits the third line. Tom Wilson, 84 overall. I don't like how many penalties he takes, though, at 60 discipline. So I'd probably prefer, you know what, let's just try and make it happen with the Buffalo Sabres. We've already gotten Sam Reinhardt from them. We signed Victor Olofsson from them. Can we pick up Michael Oliver, who's getting paid $3 million, and he plays as our fourth line grinder. I'll send you grinders back the other way. I'll give you Nick Delorier. You don't seem to want him. And then I'll also throw in uh, a couple of bottom six prospects. Why not? Where does that get us? That's actually pretty close, right? Trade rejected, yeah, understandably. But we have a boatload of draft picks. So let's see if we can move some of these. Uh, let's move one of our fourths and one of our sixths. Where does that put us with the Buffalo Sabres? Still doesn't meet the block particularly well. So let me take out all those guys. Just give them one bottom six prospect. with it, And then we'll give them a fourth, a sixth, uh, and two sixths. Yeah. Fourth and two sixths with Tiknov and Delorier. Isn't sufficient at all. Third next year with two sevenths and a sixth this year. How about that? What do you say, Buffalo? Trade accepted! Thank you very much, Buffalo. Take those picks. Nick Delorier, thank you for your service. Let's get our scoring fourth liner out there who is not just going to be an absolute liability at every moment and you never know what's going to happen. I'm going to take out, I don't know, Bunneman negative six, Pocket negative 13, but he scores. Shaw's been the worst, so he's going to come out for Michael Oliver, 85 overall. Keeps the plus one. Uh, he fits, even he fits the second line, but his player type doesn't help, so I can't put him up there. Uh, even if I wanted to put him on the third line, it wouldn't help. So he's going to stay on the fourth line. He's probably going to go on the penalty kill. Yeah, 99s everywhere. If you didn't already know, he was a created player, created by one of the players who finished in fifth place, I believe. Michael in the um, Data782 Fantasy Hockey League last season. This was his created player, one of five in our uh, in this league. So let me just try taking out Bunneman and putting Oliver on the penalty kill. Does he fit? I hope he does. Nope, negative one. But he has 99s in all the defensive categories, so I'm definitely going to be keeping him there. Uh, despite the negative one, uh, yeah, who cares? We'll keep the negative one because he has 99s in all categories, and that does not make sense. Michael Oliver, welcome to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's keep on simulating. Hopefully that is enough. Actually, I want to get Falk moved around because his plus minus has been shameful. Uh, maybe if I move uh, Jones and... No, but Jones has been terrible as well. I could swap... Actually, no, I'm going to swap the defensive... Actually, I'll swap both these pairs. Yeah, Larson Falk becomes first pair. Vajenko Boquist becomes second pair. How about that? Let's just go nuts. Minnesota Wild, here we go. First game, 7-2 loss. Huh, how do you like that? Well, slap me silly. Oh, goodness. One goal, though. He scored a goal, Michael Oliver did. Wow. Wow. Negative 16 for Justin Falk. I'm going to trade Justin Falk at this point. I will trade Justin Falk at this point. Uh, let's put Kyle Wood with Justin Falk. I don't know. What do I need for this defense to not have terrible plus minuses like this? Tampa Bay Lightning. I promise you right now, if it's if, if it's a shameful loss, I got 7-2. I was going to trade Justin Falk right there and then. Maybe I'll just trade him to the Blues. If they want him back, I'll take Tori Krug. Uh, Durapost fully healed. That's great. Oilers beat us 4-1. to one. This is the final straw against the Ducks. This is the absolute final straw. 4-2 win. You are so lucky, Justin Falk. I'm just looking for an excuse to trade you now. In Arizona against the Coyotes, who are 20-17-8. and 6-2 uh, loss. Yep, you sold me. Okay, so I did a lot of extensive research, and doesn't look like there's a lot of good trade options for Justin Falk right now, especially considering that I don't want to trade for a big offensive defenseman, because then where does Zach Jones go? Zach Jones wanted to be a part of this top four for the foreseeable future. But, I don't know. He doesn't seem to have fit well with our coaches. He's not simulating well. Maybe we just dump him. I don't know. It was just an experiment gone wrong. I'm going to healthy scratch Justin Falk, bring in Derek Forbord to just be stronger defensively. I don't know what this guy's issue is, that he's a negative 15. He's a negative 120 in his career. I don't know what his issue is. Negative 32. 
two, negative 30 plus 24. So he's a negative six in his four seasons with us now. Not terrible, but still, it's more bad than good. And he's not recapturing that form that he had back in year number one. He's been terrible ever since. So we're 19, 23, and 3. I'm, put, I'm gonna also put Jonas Corpisalo in nets. Shesterkin's starting to slip a little bit. I don't know how much is his fault and how much is the team's fault, but with Michael Oliver on that fourth line, with the defense set up as it is, and let's give Corpisalo a few starts. If this doesn't work, then I'm just gonna have to give up, and this season we miss the playoffs. We miss the playoffs, and that's fine, and that's just it. We're gonna do crazy changes in the offseason because I can only do so much. <laughs> Five zero. I can only do so much. I'm just a sink a single simple man. I am just a man. I can only do so much. It was not Forbar who got the negatives. I am just a man. Corpusal's numbers are still good even with that game. I'm gonna keep him in. Let's keep him in against the Canucks again. I can only do so much. At Rogers Arena against the Canucks, we lose one. <laughs> oh man, this is my origin story. <laughs> oh, now I see the funny side. Now I'm always smiling. Oh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 19, 25, and 3. 5 3 loss. Keep the L's coming. 2 1 shootout loss. Dumoulin's back. Wow. Now I really do see the funny side. And now I'm always smiling. Put Shaw back in the lineup now that I have to send Bunman down. Gives that third, that fourth line a plus 3. Michael Oliver, what are you going to do for me, buddy? 8 2. <laughs> Negative 24 for Worf. Negative 24. Negative 24 for Boquist. Oh, man. Corpy Salo's numbers are still not bad. Oh, my. Jones, 7 points, negative 12. 3-2 shootout win. Do we not go gentle into that good night or what? Do I just keep making blockbusters? Or do I just call it a season? Worf, man, you are disgusting. You are absolutely, you're an absolute disgrace to the Klingon race. All the best defensive defensemen in the NHL. Let's sort them by overall here. So Worf is the best defenseman in the NHL when it comes to uh, overall, but not when it comes to trade value. That get, goes to Zabanajad. Uh, Torsten Zabanajad over on the Coyotes. Doesn't fit any of our lines. Hanumaki, uh, that's according to Pablo Prust's lines. Seventh overall pick in 2022. Then it goes Wharf. So if we were to move Wharf and get a different defensive defenseman, it probably would just be Colton Pareko. Not sure if he even fits. Nick Hag fits D pairing three. So it would have to be a big defensive defenseman. And I don't know if there's anyone aside from Wharf. And he has just been so bad. I don't know what to say. I'm going to move him to the bottom pair or something. And let's just, I mean, we've got to start just trading players away at this point. Who's on the trading block here? Let me just put some players on expiring deals in the trading block. Throw him on the block. There you go, team. Send me offers. If it's the right offer, I might just take it in my delusional state right now. I cannot believe this. Worf, you're going down here. Larson's going to play with Boquist. Why not? Uh, actually, you know what? Kyle Wood, top pair. Bang. Uh, Rajenko, bottom pair. Jones will play with Larson. Forbort will come out for Dumoulin. And that gets a zero. Cool. All right. 5-3-0 for the chemistry. This chemistry has just an absolutely nothing. Kubalik, he has 18 points with a plus 5 in 27 games. So the first line's fine, I suppose. Negative 1, negative 10, negative 7 on the second line. I don't know. I don't know. Third line, negative 14, negative 11, negative 9. So, do I swap Hyman up somewhere? Really don't know. Michael Oliver, he has three goals and is a negative four in 12 games. Even Texier is a trade candidate at this point. Foodie, man. 20 points in 52 games. Okay, you're going third line center. You have a terrible third line fit, but I don't really care. Plus three, one, negative one, plus three, whatever. Really, whatever. This team just has 
absolutely folded. I, can only, I traded Jones. I traded Jenner. I'm scratching Falk. I have Warf on the third pair. What more can I do? What more can I do? I've done so much. I'm fed up. 4-3 win. Are these line changes going to do anything for us? 3-2 shootout loss. 6-2 loss. Do we just wrap it up and call it a year? Or can we still fight? 3-1 loss. <sighs> After these two games, I'm going to update the scouting. We're going to need it. LA Kings, 23-25-8. We beat them. We beat the, the Capitals. We're going to be a fringe team, right? And just miss out on the playoffs and have a bad first-round pick. Is that what we're going to have? 53 points. Rangers have two games in hand on us. It's just, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm just selling, my friends. I'm just selling. Justin Falk, what I get? I don't even know if I want to trade Justin. No, I'm not going to trade Justin Falk. Too much trade value to get nothing out of him. Zach Jones's trade value is going up somehow. It's 10 points and a negative 12. I don't know what to say. Uh, Adam Larson, he's not coming back next season. What can we get for him? Teams want to give me a third. Let me look through the, uh, these offers. Second and a sixth from the Oilers. Another second from the Oilers. Really not the best prospect options either. Just seems like a second and a fifth. Second next season. That's it, huh? To the Oilers? All right. Adam Larson back to the team that got him in exchange for Taylor Hall for a second and a sixth. Fantastic. Best lines. Literally just best lines. I have no care anymore. I have lost all my care. And now I'm going to just look around the NHL. I'm going to see if there's any prospects on the trade block and trade for them maybe. I don't know. With it, Since I have so much trade value to burn. Any high-end prospects out here? Barahowski, 76 overall, playmaker, 5-star puck skills, though. A bit of a wonky prospect. 6th round pick. Interesting. Preko is on the block for the Dallas Stars. That would be an interesting option for us. They are a fringe team. We don't really know what his fit is. We could get some more scouting done on him, but I don't think Preko is really an option for us. That's, a, that's what a contender does, and we're not a contender, obviously. Grant Price, the 14th overall pick by the Lightning, power forward, medium elite, is on the block. Uh, not good numbers down with Syracuse, but I wouldn't put too much weight into that. Uh, they don't have a lot of salary cap, so we couldn't really trade them anyone of crazy high value. But uh, medium elite power forward nonetheless, which is tough to find. Maybe he'll grow. I don't know. Could I trade you someone? Like, would Justin Falk get it done? No, maybe with a salary cap. Forget it. John Carlson on the block. Alex Ovechkin on the block. I'd love to make these moves, but that's not what a team like us kind of does. No good prospects really anywhere. Mason McTavish. He's a sniper. Oh, yeah? He's a sniper. Didn't quite know that. Centerman, but 75 of 21. I don't know. I just... not. I don't know. What kind of picks do we have in this year's draft? We have our first, second... Two fourths, a fifth, three sixths, and then three sevenths as well. Scouts are sent out, just doing best lines basically. <sighs> Man, the amount of games we're losing by one goal, just not being able to score. We win six to one out of nowhere, barely scrape together a two one win. Now we're gonna start winning again, right? Now that I'm not caring about anything, now we'll start raking together some dubs. Two one loss against the Hurricanes. We're 25, 30, and six. What kind of offers are these? I have so many people on my block, and that's the offer that you send me? Rangers. Uh, why would I do that? Rangers beat us 5-1. to one. Great. Throw Olofsson in a 7th for Christian Fisher and a 4th. Do you think I'm delusional? Just call it a season aside from that. I'm calling it a, a lost season. I'm just calling it a lost season. Overhaul. Even more possibly of an overhaul. Who knows in the off season? trade for high draft picks move our trade value like falk or whatever there's a medium franchise player slated to go first overall do whatever you have to do to just reload on picks or whatever make this team a real contender it seems as though we were pretenders last year and we got exposed this year i suppose even with the moves that we made zach jones get him out of here i don't know who else has to leave just let's just pile up as many one goal game l's we can take as possible just lose as many one goal games as possible here and I don't know, just reload for another season. And if it's another season like this, then we call it a franchise mode because at this point, as the general manager, we would be fired. Even already, we're on the hot seat. So right now, we can fire the coach, we can do all personnel. That can buy us a season. But 
there's a lot of pressure. I'm, I'm just, I feel stressed. There's a lot of pressure on winning, and we are not doing any of that. 31, 36, and 6. Now we're going to start winning games right at the end, right? I want to tank. I want to tank at the bottom of this. Uh, yeah. Whatever. The team's doing well enough at tanking. I don't need to touch anything else. What an upsetting session. 6-1 loss. 2-1 loss. That's great. We're 33, 41, and 6. What a season. Let's end it off with a bang. Let's just get to 42 L's. Let's finish it off with a big smile. First period down 1 0. Second period down 2 1. Classic down by 1. Third period, final 20 minutes of one of the most shameful seasons in franchise history. Justin Falk just <laughs> plunged that dagger a little deeper. The irony, man. Now I see the funny side. 2 2 game with 5 minutes to go. Two minutes ago, there it is. That's what we've been looking for. The collapse. Minute 37 left, and we lose on a one goal. Just one goal that's scored in the final minutes of the of the game. That's how we lose. That's how we love to lose. 34, 42, and 6 is the final record. Let's hope we're as close to the bottom as possible here. Oh, Maple Leafs win the President's Trophy. And we finish. Cross those fingers. Okay. All right. Fourth bottom in the NHL. We weren't going to get below the Sharks, so at least we finished below the Red Wings Sabres. We finish as the fourth worst team in the NHL, letting in 3.06 goals per game. Power play was at 20.5%, better than all these, all these scrub teams. One of the better power plays in the league, actually. And our penalty kill at 81.8, which wasn't terrible either. Closer to the bottom than the top. Dominic Kubelik, what did he do this season? He scored 32 points in 57 games with us, negative two. He'll be a uh, piece of the franchise moving forward. Patrick Laine takes a step back, I suppose. I guess pretty normal to what he usually does, but just not what we were expecting. A step back from last season, at least. Sam Reinhardt definitely took a step back, 55 points, after usually he puts up more than 55 assists. He's never had less than 57 assists. This year he gets 55 points. Felipe Sanderson in his officially, I guess, sophomore season puts up 53 and 82. That was good from him. Bjorkstrand, usually scoring in the 60s, 70s, 60s. He puts up 49. That was shameful. Justin Falk, 36 and 69 and negative 8. That was garbage. Liam Foody, absolutely horrific. After he puts up 48 last year, he scores 36 with a negative 13. Michael Oliver on that fourth line scores 18 points and 16 goals, negative two in 42 games. Could probably keep him for the grinder line. Zach Hyman, 34 points in 82 games, negative nine. Not sold on keeping him. Victor Olofsson, 13 goals in 82 games. He is gone. Adam Boquist, he had 20 points and was a negative 18 in 57 games. I can't wait to see Worf Rizhenko's plus minus. Alex Texier scored four goals. Four goals. How does the simulation do that to us? Scores 27, 22, 18, and then four. How? Rojenko negative 24 with all that defensive categories. What did he do last season in the plus minus category? Plus 16, negative 24. I don't know if I'm keeping him. The grinders had terrible plus minuses. Shaw, 16 points, negative 7 in 65 games. J Zach Jones, negative 6 with 12 points in 82 games. What a joke. What a real joke. Shesterkin, 23, 32, and 4. 896 save percentage, 3.2 goals against average. How much was his fault? I don't know. Corpy Salad did well. 11, 11, and 2. 918 save percentage, 2.37 goals against. Hats off to him, I suppose. Let's go see all of our friends here. Let's see how many uh, hat tricks did Seth Jones score? How many millions of points did he get? Yeah. He scored 43 points in 55 games. More than he had ever scored in a single season with us in the franchise mode. He gets that in 55 games with Chicago. Yep. And speaking of players who like to score more in two games than they did in their entire careers. Let's see Zach Wierenski. Yep. 64 points from him this season. So Jones and Wierenski... Constantly getting 36, between 30 and 40 points each. We trade them away. They get 6, 75, 64. Jones was on pace for 60, 70 himself. And we trade them away, and that's what they do as two-way D. But for our for our team, when we have two-way defensemen, oh, yeah, zero for the chemistry, and they can't do anything. Trade them away, oh, they become deities. They become demigods. They can do whatever they want. 
no problem at all. Entire league. Shifley, 99 points. Good for him. Just taking a scroll down. Blah, blah, blah for anyone interested. Goals in the NHL. Sorry, assists was Nick Ehlers with 67 goals. Austin Matthews with 54. Defenseman is going to be a is Jack, Jack Adams. James Norris here for Wierenski. Perhaps he's up there with all the other boys. And uh, goaltending, let's see the final numbers here. Peter Maracic, there you go. Why get, you have an 84 overall who outplays a 94 overall. That's great. At least in the wins. His number, yeah, Mikey LaForge's numbers were nicer. Probably a Vezina season from him. And then you have Caden Primo, who's an 81 overall, and he's better than Shesterkin. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Elvis, yeah, of course. He has a great season over in Pittsburgh. I don't know. I'm down to overhaul everything. Brassois, yeah, that's cool. 81 overall. He goes 33, 16, and 10. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I'm even down to overhaul uh, goaltending. I'm down to do it all. So the scouting's been updated. Let's just, I don't know, let's get to the off season. Let's hope for some luck. If we drop from four to whatever, seven or whatever in the draft, I'm really going to snap even more, but... Let's just please get out of here. This was an absolute nightmare of a season. Uh, I'm upset. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. And I'm just, above all, disappointed. Things are hopefully going well down in Cleveland. I do not know. Let's take a pause here. Why not, actually? Uh, in Cleveland, hey, we're still alive down here in Cleveland. That's great. And for the second straight season, the Cleveland Monsters are Calder Cup champions. Or at least there's somewhat of a silver lining somewhere, somehow, I suppose. I've been working overtime extra hard on this draft class, so I really hope we have a good draft pick. Please don't tell me we drop. Four is fine, but please don't tell me we're dropping. I'll take a top pick as well, especially if we move to number one for a franchise player. Let's see that draft order. And we drop from four to six. Whatever. We're going to trade up anyways if we have to. Islanders keep number one. Arizona two to 11 to two. Detroit five to three. And then Nashville, San Jose, and ourselves all dropping, as well as Buffalo, blah, blah, blah. Okay. From four to six. Retired players now. Evgeny Malkin with 1,385 points. Still an 85 overall. He goes out. Kopitar, Getzlaff, Spezza, Pavelski, Carter, Perry, Oshie, Keith, James Neal, Bobby Ryan. Lots of big names going out there. Mathieu Perrault, Leo Komarov, uh, Marco Scandella. Carl Alsner, goaltenders going out. Mark Andre Fleury at the age of 39, who was disgraceful when he played for us. 551, the total number of wins in his career. Pekka Rene at the age of 41, and Ryan Miller at the age of 43, still a 77 overall. Cam Talbot, Corey Schneider, big retirement class, that's for sure. As the Florida Panthers, by the way, winning the Stanley Cups, I didn't even mention that. Ryan Getzlaff is now a coach. Ryan and Talbot are both uh, scouts. Any retirements there doesn't look like it, as we will be overhauling our coaching staff. So we'll be looking for a new coach in free agency. And here we are with the sixth overall pick. Moving into the draft, let's check out the class. Like we said, the first overall will be a medium lead sniper from the Extra Liga, Vaclav Klesla. He had 51 points in 52 games in an A-plus competition. That is bonkers bananas. Justin Jenner, medium lead playmaker. Uh, Philip Eudes, medium lead power forward center, all with really good stats, that's for sure. Uh, Jude Thomas, medium lead playmaker, really good playmaker. Uh, and Norm Romano, medium lead sniper, uh, 24 goals, 77 assists though. All of them are NHL ready, so that's great to see. Then we move into the top six forwards and the top four defense. Lots of good prospects, I would say, in the first round. I really worked hard in the scouting. Look at how many people are uncovered to four bars. I'm pretty impressed with it this year. Uh, after that, it starts to go down. Obviously, the accuracy starts to go down. Low elite sniper that we can take at the beginning of the second round. Low elite sniper there. Low elite there. So let's see any other gems when it comes to medium elites, high elite, potentially two bar high elite. Medium elite defensive defenseman, medium elite hybrid goalie. And then when it comes to guarantees on the low elites, um, pick number 254, there's a left wing. Okay, so we should get some good prospects in the system, but we want to consider, do we trade up to get a top four pick? Or sorry, top five pick. All these guys are elite in the top five. Do we go for that? Um, 
central scouting rankings what we should sort by. So do we trade into the top five? If yes, for who? And with what? Or do we keep it at six? I'd prefer not to keep it at six. Even though these prospects look pretty good, I'd prefer to get one of the medium elite NHL ready guys, especially Klus uh, because we need goals on this team and we don't seem to be scoring them. So either the power forward center or Klus the right uh, the uh, sniper right winger, I think, would be ideal. Uh, Patrick Line, we could re-sign him. After, ooh, he wants, it's much cheaper, and he does want to extend, correct? Yeah, I might just take this right now, because last time I looked a couple of weeks ago, he wanted still that 13, 14 million range, but now 85% would be 8 year, 8 million. So do we go 8 by 8 on Patrick Line? Would that be unrealistic or what? Let me know your thoughts on that. Boquist, does he stick on the team? Um, Falk, do we move him? Hyman, do we move him? Olafson, do we move him? There's a lot of candidates. Jones down to an 82. Texier down to an 82, making 5 million. So, oh man, it's going to be an overhaul. What players do we target? What player types do we target? Um, maybe do we just spend money in free agency or what? Just this, and that, if we don't, if things don't get better, next season's our last season because I got to convince the ownership just to give us one more year. Panthers took down the Leafs in seven, Lightning in six, Penguins in seven, Elvis and the Penguins going to the conference finals, and then took down the Avalanche in five games. So a nice, easy cruise to the cup for Florida. Uh, President Trophy went to the Leafs, like we said. Individual awards, Shifley, Art Ross, Hart to Matthews, James Norris to Riley, Lady Bing to Ehlers, Calder to Mason Shaw, Conn Smythe to Jonathan Huberdeau, Vezina to Gorgiev. Jennings to Leonard, Masterton to Slavin, Jack Adams to the coach of the Caps. Kunin, really, wow, Luke Kunin winning the Frank J. Selke, the Ryan O'Reilly Award, wow. Lindsay goes to Matthews, Morris Richard to Matthews. In the AHL, anything for the Cleveland Monsters? Yeah, we got awards for Tarasov, most valuable player of the playoffs, so Conn Smythe. Uh, sportsmanship to Schlappik, and all right, that's cool. Jacob Perrault's going to be pushing to make the team this season for sure. He had 69 points in 76 games. Uh, Chartier, Dara Post with 34 goals with 99 shooting accuracy now. Does he make the NHL next year? We need guys who can score goals, right? So do we get Michael Oliver with 99 shooting on the fourth line? Dara Post with 99 shooting on the third line? Or what? I don't know. Tarasov and Rodrigue are both probably going to be pushing for NHL backup. Yeah, uh, Rod Tarasov is good enough to be the NHL backup now. And I think he should get it. So does that mean that Shesterkin's out and Corpusalo's the starter? Uh, Corpusalo's out and Tarasov's the backup? Or both of them are out, Tarasov's the backup, we get a brand new goalie, I don't know. In the playoffs, good performances from not too many forwards, actually. It was really, I guess, uh, was it really Tarasov who put on a show? Uh, yes, wow, 1.49 goals against average and a 944 save percentage with three shutouts for Danil Tarasov. Uh, Perot, Seneshin, Durapos, etc. Cliff Poo even, with a little bit of life, the third round pick that got traded for Jeff Skinner. Progress reports for anyone interested here. Kubalik up to an 87. Shesterkin down to an 85. Jones and Texay down to 82. Anderson at, Sanderson at an 87, like we already said previously. And in the system, good growth from Schneider from a 55 to a 61. Uh, some other growth here. DeFazio, 65. He had 14 points there. Petrovic, the medium lead uh, grinder, up from a 49 to a 52 overall. Uh, won't touch too much. Uh, Burry also as well from a 67 to a 69. He was a gem pick in the third round, or uh, yeah, I believe the third round, who hasn't really been doing anything special. But we will wrap it up there, my friends. We need to think about the coaching staff, the forwards, and literally everything on this team. Staff chemistry down to a 53. I'm down to fire everyone and just make it just clean house. Wow, I don't get it. I really don't get it. How were we not scoring? How were we not winning games? How did we finish fourth, fourth worst in the NHL? Year one, we win the Metro. Year two, we miss the playoffs. Year three, we finish second in the Metro and make the, the conference finals. Year four, we finish fourth bottom from the NA, in the entire NHL. I really do not understand. Do we need to play into the player types? But chemistry didn't seem to be helping. Do we need to overhaul the team? We did. We traded big pieces. Jenner and Jones, both leaving in this episode, didn't do anything for us. And Jones just went and thrived over on the Blackhawks as well. Forgot to look at Jenner as well, who scored 17 points in 55 games after scoring 6 in 25 with us. 
Oh, man. Do we sign him in free agency if he's available? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just absolutely fed up. So I'm sorry for the neg negativity around this episode. Uh, it's just so upsetting. Let me know your thoughts here on YouTube or, in, or over on the Discord server. Link in the description for how we can turn this team around. We're about three and a half weeks away from NHL 22. So we want to get as much of this franchise mode done as possible. Help be a part of the team and get us a Stanley Cup out here. I need as much help as possible. I always have my ideas, but it seems as though things aren't working and GM data needs to look at his team of assistant GMs before we all get kicked to the curb. So thank you so much for watching. Leave all your thoughts here on YouTube or on Discord. Link in the description, as I said. Link for everything else that you need. Also in the description, make sure you're subscribed for NHL 22 action coming soon as well as the updates when they become available. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one for the 2024 off season.